So, Tom, what have you been hearing from the leaders and the, of the EU and China regarding this agreement? Mm. Well, Paul, as you say, these negotiations started in back in 2013, so it's been a long run uh, for EU and Chinese officials. And finally, you had this call then by the leaders of both China and the European Union, President Xi Jinping, but also on the European side, Charles Michel and Ursula von der Leyen, uh, as well, by the way, as Angela Merkel of Germany. And what they said, the Europeans, was that this is an agreement now that they've given their backing. They said it's of major economic significance for European investors, they said that China has committed in this deal to unprecedented and unprecedented level of market access for EU investors and that it will give businesses certainty and predictability. What it does in consequence is it opens up market access for European investors in areas and sectors ranging from autos, where of course they have a major stake, to telecommunications, but is also cuts back on some of these issues that the Europeans but also the US have been concerned about in terms of state subsidies, SOEs and the prioritising of certain contracts by state-backed companies. It also embeds in this deal as well a commitment around environmental sustainability and it bans forced tech transfer. For China, the deal shows, at least they will hope it does, that the country is a major geopolitical force, that it's following the norms of global trade, and it will also potentially limit some of the tougher stance that the EU has taken on restrictions of Chinese investments uh, in the European Union. Beijing, as well, may now push for a full-blown free trade agreement with the European Union on the back of striking this investment treaty uh, with the EU. Now, it's going to face its final touches in the months ahead. It has to be voted on by the European Parliament. And, of course, there are concerns amongst some parliamentarians in Brussels about the fact that this doesn't, as they would say, address human rights issues here, force labour issues as well. And it may also irk the incoming US administration. There's been some sounds there from some of Biden's team that they would prefer to have coordinated with the Europeans on some of these issues around trade and market access. So what are we expecting to hear from Xi Jinping's annual New Year's Eve speech tonight? Yeah, he's going to be giving his speech, which is an annual affair. He will no doubt be wrapping up what he would describe as the successes of China in combating COVID-19 since the outbreak at the early part of this year. And, of course, the economic revival that we've seen here, though modest, is, of course, continuing. What we know is that for 2021, a key priority, of course, all sectors here in China will be the focus on national security. We heard from President Xi Jinping. He called in members of the Politburo earlier this month and he asked them to build what he described as a holistic national security architecture. There's deep concern here amongst the party that China is coming under attack, particularly from the US and areas covering everything from human rights and forced tech transfer, labor issues, but also technology as well. At one recent meeting, you had an advisor to China's spy agency at the Ministry of State Security, and that is seen as an indication that the team around Xi Jinping and the president himself are preparing for the worst under the Biden administration and that national security will be a key focus for them in 2021. We've already seen them put out a new rule, by the way, around foreign investments, ensuring that certain bodies here and agencies will be able to inspect and oversee some of those investments on, again, national security grounds.